Welcome back to the channel. Today we're reviewing The Wizards Dark Times on PSVR 2. Now this game is available on Oculus Quest and I think it came out on PSVR. I'm not too sure, but I definitely played it back in Gamescom at least four years ago. Now keep that in mind. I did complete it on Quest two years ago and I've just rolled the credits again on PSVR 2. And it's around five hours of gameplay and it's definitely showing its age. Even though I, they definitely seem to have done some work graphically, the PC version is still superior. And I don't think they're using eye tracking and dynamic foveated rendering to get the best out of PSVR because it kind of looks old in some ways, but also nice. Like for example, when you make certain spells, the OLED panel really shines. It's almost a bit too bright to look at these spells and that's really awesome. Uh, there's a lot of nice effects when you're casting the spells. And one thing I sort of noticed that I never really noticed before is this game doesn't really have any RPG elements to it. Like I kind of thought in my head this game was like an RPG, but you don't ever really upgrade anything. Like you find spells and you use those spells as you go through the game, but there's no actual like skill points to be spent on your character. You just use the spells. Now that's absolutely fine. And the game is like a linear shooter that's basically what it is but you use hand gestures to make the spells now let's go over gameplay i would say the majority of it is really quite repetitive and i think maybe it's because the ai isn't that smart and sometimes you can just stand there depending on the spells you have and just do the same thing over and over and over the only time the game really gives you any sort of challenges with the bosses but even then i don't know how many sort of enemy models are there it's probably six maybe seven i think you've got the like the goblins the mushrooms they vary in color the orcs they vary in color and then you've got like the knights they vary in color and the reason i'm saying vary in color is if they're blue then you kind of have to use either fire or your shields to attack their ice then you use fire you know what i'm saying it's like an opposite elemental battle it's pretty cool doing the spells but they don't always work very well i don't know whether it's an issue you're tracking i'm not too sure it doesn't always work as you'd expect so yeah even though the environments are ever changing and i'm very pleased with that like these environments look really nice so if you're on the fence of whether to buy it on psvr2 or pc definitely go pc because i know the game definitely looks better on pc but the environments are really nice um, but the gameplay is pretty mediocre unfortunately uh also there is like hints of really cool stuff there's chests that are tell you right you need to use fire ice and another ability basically and find little tablets around the caves to unlock chests the problem is when you unlock these trinkets they don't really do anything well they don't do anything you just pick them up and the guy will tell you ah oh, i've never really seen this before and then you'll drop it and that'll be it and as you go through the game there's checkpoints that always offer you to go back to like this home state but nothing's in the home state I kind of thought, oh, I'm going to go here and I'm going to level up or spend some money, maybe. Nothing actually happens. Uh, so that it's a bit weird, you know. And I think that's where it's shown its age. I think four years ago, three years ago, you might have overlooked that because of the wow of being in this game at the time, especially on PC. But now it, it's, it, does, it just doesn't has an age very well for me personally. I still had a, a, a good time, but quite often I've got bored. Uh, once you unlock this like laser ability, which is like being Iron Man, for example, it's kind of end game and lightning. There's not really that much you have to do anymore apart from stand still and watch enemies just roll in from wherever they come from in the level. Also, there's certain problems I would say uh, for example, there's a bit in the game where you need to stand on like big trolls to go through these quite hard bits of a swamp and you can just simply go inside the troll. You can just hide inside the troll and since no one can see you, you don't get damaged. The game also cr probably crashed four or five times. Uh, the music is sporadic as in sometimes it starts and stops for no good reason and there's some game sounds missing and it's not all the time as i said it's just sporadically missing sometimes uh teleports didn't work so you walked up to them to go somewhere else they didn't work but on the whole i just feel it's nice for people who haven't played the game maybe but don't go in there expecting anything too revolutionary. I think this game is definitely an older game, but I am pleased it's coming to PSVR 2 so new people can experience it. Now, the price of this game is $24.99. What are you getting out of this for $24.99? You're getting five hours of gameplay, uh, and that's there's like a story mode and adventure mode. I probably died three times. Uh, it's not... I wouldn't say it's that challenging because it gives you a teleport ability, which I would recommend not using as much as possible because it just changes how easy the game is. 
And it's and I've got an email basically saying the Brotherhood update is free for all owners of the main game. Now I don't know if that means if you own the game on PSVR that you kind of get this upgrade for free. Definitely check in your libraries if you were a PSVR owner. But apart from that, in my money, that is £20. It's reasonably priced. Um, I'm not angry at the price, but it is a very mediocre title. But yeah, overall, I would say it's a game that's showing its age. I think the trailer makes it look a lot better than what it looks like in the headset. As I said, it doesn't use uh, the features of PSVR 2 in particular. I don't remember feeling any headset haptics. I don't remember the adaptive triggers working, um, but the haptics are there in the controllers. And yeah, overall, I feel they could have done a little bit more. You know, I do feel they could have done a little bit more, especially using, especially after playing something like Legendary Tales, you know, dynamic favorite rendering and eye tracking really does double down on the sharpness. And I think this game would have benefited from that. That. textures sometimes look a little bit low so the brotherhood part of the uh, title is there is a multiplayer experience added on uh, i'm assuming that's also part of the free update uh, and it sees three of you basically being all different classes one's fire one ice and one's arcane but unfortunately i waited in a lobby for absolutely ages there's no one online and no one could join me so unfortunately i couldn't get to test that but that would also add on to the gameplay an average game i would call it an average game so if you're really interested in checking it out for 25 dollars, i'm not going to tell you not to it's kind of all right